See, it gets me, it gets me nervous. Yo, right what's now. up, Street Talks? Eric came from there. Came Street Photography Vlog. Chill, my buddy, uh, Dylan Fan. Hi, nice to see you. So, Dylan, nice you. who are you? Uh, I am Dylan Fan. I guess I am an amateur photographer. Uh huh. Uh, I, I'm a student at RISD, uh -huh. Rhode Island School of Design. Yep. Freshman. I just like street photography, and yeah, happen to meet you on the on the street. Wait, so yeah. um, so I just have personal curiosity. How do you know me? Well. I have followed your photography since I started getting into street photography, uh -huh. um, but never thought I'd, I'd actually meet you in person uh -huh. until we bumped into each other uh, in a post office here. Oh, and yeah. I was like, oh shit, you're Eric Kim, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then from there, you know, it just kind of ended up happening. Wait, so Dylan, yeah. tell, me, tell me more of your life story. So, um, <laughs> why'd you... Why'd you so you're studying, you're actually not studying photography at RISD, right? No, I'm studying industrial design, but you know, I've recently been thinking maybe I should do photography anyways. Oh really? Why, yeah. why, 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 why are you thinking of that? Um, probably just because I like it a lot and mm -hmm. that, um, I don't know, it seems more fulfilling than ID so mm. far. Uh, but I gotta say I'm on the fence because, um, I've heard a lot of negative things about studying photography, but I'm not sure. Where the where you, you can say it? What, oh, what, pe where, people are like, some of the downsides. Oh, people people say photography, um, studying photography in college is like, uh, it's like a waste of money. It's like studying painting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think so because yeah. you know you can obviously work for magazines and newspapers and whatever, mm -hmm. but um, I'd have to talk to my parents about that. Oh <laughs> yeah. well, so what what about street photography do you love most? Um, just that it's like so spontaneous that you never know what you're gonna get um and like i hate setting things up and i hate setting up lighting and whatever mm -hmm. so like and honestly you get the best lighting when you're like outside anyways mm. well so, I, t I took a look at your um your website and it looks uh -huh. super duper awesome with your portfolio thank and everything you, thank you thank you wait thank so you, um you. uh <laughs> you 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 had this funny uh little thing the last month or so you you know you started shooting fuji yeah wait, so tell us tell us your little fuji story to um what you got now yeah so so for like three years I shot Fuji from like when I entered high school uh -huh. and I got Expo 2 excited out of my mind yep. and it was probably the best camera I've owned to date yep. and then recently the 3 came out sold my 2 uh -huh. in, in anticipation and 3 came out with this weird ass screen that I couldn't handle at all you, um, did you try using it? I, I actually did I, I tried I did. using it and it was just Where? ridiculous um, I actually tried it before I bought this uh, when I was in France Oh. I just went to a camera store. Yeah, yeah. They had it. They didn't have any Leicas or whatever. I yeah, just wanted yeah. to see. Uh -huh. And the flippy screen, um, it just doesn't. It just doesn't make the like the the flow. You know. I mean, it has and, you no know, flow. It's supposed to be zen and minimal. I know it's supposed to be that. Focus but it's on like, the shooting experience. I know, and it's way more than that because you're not supposed to chimp. But what yeah. people do nowadays, and I have seen someone using yeah, it. Uh -huh. What they do is they take a picture, then they open the screen. Oh, like immediately? Yeah, every, oh, so it's like now yeah, it's a different yeah. reflex. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not the same. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, that's actually interesting because, um, you know, shooting film and then I've also like uh, shot with a like MD. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing with the MD at least is that because there's not an option to chimp. Right. You don't think about chimping. Right. Whereas, you know, because like even like a lot of Olympuses or even Lumix cameras, right? Like you can flip You can just flip back. the LCD screen yeah. backwards. So yeah, actually I think like man fuji just like compromises that like they should if they really want to do the no lcd screen they just should go just go like for a version go 100 100 percent. yeah because yeah, i think that's that's what the the problem with design right is that like yeah. when you try to compromise the de design it just ends up like pleasing nobody it's, no it ends up being like way more than it's supposed to be and like i've heard people try to shoot landscape with it and actually it seems like a good feature for landscape to have a tilty screen okay but um when you put a base plate on it um it doesn't flip over because it's like so seamless against the back yeah, of the camera. Uh -huh. And then I think, well, the MD10, or the MD10, right? Or yeah, MD10, MD, yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, I, I remember reading reviews about it and thinking myself, like, this is the craziest camera ever. Yeah, like, yeah, why uh -huh. would anyone pay $7,000 for a camera uh -huh. without a screen? Yeah. And then I realized, like, it's actually a really good thing. You know what I mean? Like, you really focus on it, it's not an option. And that's exactly right, like, the Fuji. It like gives you an option, but it's so clumsy that like you develop this terrible habit of like putting the camera down and then flipping the screen backwards. Yeah. You know, just like don't either have the screen there. I like the fixed screen actually. Mm -hmm. You know, on the two. Yeah. Or just don't have a screen at all. You know, it's like it's a ridiculous compromise, and it has a second screen. 
on the back. Oh, where you can see the you can see the, the little the thingy. Yeah, the little film presets. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I I heard from the guy in the camera store that um it's not backlit and it's like what like a Game Boy screen. Almost. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, really yeah. even use it when you're outside. So I you know personally, I don't know. The the three just did not convince me at all. Oh, yeah. and uh, Dylan, how old are you? Yeah. Oh, I'm only 19. I'm 19. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So so you know 19 year olds <laughs> in photography. So I I actually just turned 32. Yeah. Um, uh, what you might call it, like. You know, I think most people watch my channel. They're like, probably like uh, mid twenties, late twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, whatever. Like, what do you, what is it like being a nineteen-year-old street photographer now, or just photographer, or art student? Like, how, what, what, what's life like? Because uh, you know, like, life is kind of hard. Because you know, people's yeah. like, you know, these Gen <laughs> yeah, Z yeah, yeah, or no. millennial, whatever. So why, why is life hard? No, because, because, um, well, I'm not gonna say like I'm great or anything, yeah. but, um. People don't take us seriously. I would just say us because there are definitely more. Yeah. You know, but um, as we're so young, we don't really have a platform yeah. yet. And like, there are some photographers who do have platforms that are our age, mm -hmm. but um, they're usually like landscape photographers. When it comes to like street photographer, you know, people my age, yeah. no one takes them seriously. So when I uh, actually contacted like a DC store, which yeah. is like my home store, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. you know, where, I, where I'm from. Yep. Oh, the guy was so rude to me. I just what? asked about. I just asked about returning. Remember, I told you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Returning the. They sent me this, uh, like M two forty in pretty bad quality. Yeah. Didn't match the photos at all, mm -hmm. and I just was like, "Can I return it?" And he was like, "You know, it sounds like you don't even want your camera in the first place. You know, blah 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 blah." And I was like, "You know, this is just like ageism, but reversed. You know." Uh, so yeah, in yeah. the end, like what I thought when I when I started street photography in sixteen was like. I'll just do something later because mm. like it's too much to try mm. now, you know, and it was kind of difficult because um, there are a lot of people who just kind of push you aside, you know, mm. try to enter compositions. Yeah, or whatever. They're like, that's, nah. that's, that's pretty annoying because yeah. actually I looked at a lot of your photos. Yeah. You're like compositions are actually really good. Like, thanks, you know, I, I wish I was because like, I only probably thanks. really took street photography seriously. Uh, oh, when I even. Maybe also like when I yeah actually around when you're as your age to like 18, yeah. 19, 20 or something like that. But then like you know my compositions were way more basic, kind of like more the Henri Cartier Besson. Yeah, yeah. Look for a nice background, so on it. But that you're shooting like you know much closer, you're getting the layers. The, I still the need to get closer. Are, I still need to get closer. The photos are very closer, dynamic. Yeah. Oh, so speaking of which, so show us show us your new uh, bad right. boy. Oh wait, really? Like, yeah. let me make a disclaimer. Yeah. I don't want to talk bad about the DC store. I really love them. I've been there so many times, mm -hmm. but it's just this one time where we ran into an issue ageism. because of ageism, right? Ageism. When I want to get a camera reverse, now, they won't, reverse they won't take ageism. Me seriously. All right. So this is this is the ME 220. So what what is that? Uh, so just a like a rangefinder, but the most basic one. Um, I like it so far. Just had a couple issues, you know. I explained, but. Um, this is a 21 millimeter lens on it. I don't show, really show, use it. Show your, show your. Yeah, this is this is my favorite one right so, here. So, wait. Color scope R35. I'm gonna do the zoom up. Yeah, sure. So, what what lens is this? This is a Voigtlander color scope R35 millimeter 2.5. Uh -huh. So why why did you choose this one? Uh, well, it's a pancake lens, and I love pancake lenses because they make the camera look prettier. Mm. Um, put it put put, put that. Yeah, sure, sure. On. You got a 3D printed hood on that bad boy? 3D too? printed hood from shapeways.com. Yeah, mm. you can get it for $35. Oh, well, pretty good. And also, I got this because it was the cheapest. Oh, nice. How much yeah. How much you get it for? I got it. For what did you buy the lens? For I got it in Paris called Photo Souffren, mm -hmm. uh, just like near the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. It was like about 450 which oh, is more than true. in the United States, but after tax, it's only about 20 bucks more. Oh, okay, that, that's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty good. So there it is. So why did you choose the ME? So the ME, like, um, talk about because you know it's the old M9 body, right. but it's it's made more gangster, right? It's a little bit more gangster because the color. Yeah. The color is kind of wacky, but I really dig it. Mm. Um, I saw this forum, uh, an entire thread dedicated to whether the ME220 is ugly, the ugliest yeah. Leica in the world, or the prettiest. I actually think it looks really nice. I think it looks nice, right? It looks That's why in real life that. it actually looks more gray than green. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. And. I just chose it because of the simplicity and mm -hmm. um, has a CCD sensor. Yeah. I think it's the last one to have the CCD sensor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, produces film-like images. Mm -hmm. uh, very easy to shoot with. It's pretty honest, you know? As in, like, it doesn't deliver 
you know, more than your wildest dreams. It just right. Did you, Continue. Did you get this camera in, in, in Japan? Yeah, I got this in you Japan. Got, I, got, I watched the unboxing video. Oh, you watched the unboxing? Like, did do you normally shoot with Lumix or? Oh, um, well, it's so, so funny. The the reason I got the Lumix actually yeah. was the the Lumix G9 was uh -huh. uh, I had my my Ricoh GR2 right, yeah, and it I was in died, Japan, right? and it just died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in Japan, and yeah. I go to like all the fucking camera stores, and I tried all the cameras, mm -hmm. and actually I didn't like any of the cameras. You mean the DSLRs at least? Like none of the, I didn't yeah. like no cameras, and yeah. it was like so disappointing, right? And then I was just like fucking around with cameras, yeah. and then I actually picked up the the Lumix, right? Mm. And I actually really liked it surprisingly. Yeah. Like, it's I mean, I've heard good things. A, yeah, it's yeah. actually the most underrated camera and the, the thing that's actually yeah. pretty interesting and I think a lot of people don't know that know this but then you know how like Leica works with the uh, Panasonic right. Lumix their lenses so like yeah. even effectively the Q2 I always joke about this is this is like yeah. a really expensive Lumix yeah. <laughs> even though it's made in yeah, Germany yeah, yeah. I mean like if you look at the UI and stuff it's pretty essentially because like, yeah. like even you know the new S SL2 I think that and oh, the yeah, yeah, Lumix yeah. S1R I think it shares the same sensor perhaps you know, yeah, and then they, the body shape looks, looks the same. same yeah, they kind of look the so, same. So, I mean, like, obviously, yeah. it's um, made in Germany, blah, 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 but it's essentially the same thing. But, yeah, this this camera, honestly, yeah. at this point, I use it more for, like, vlogging and stuff. And, you know, all the Olympus accessories work with uh, Leica. Yeah, 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 Which is, like, crazy, because, yeah, 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 like, yeah. Uh, Leica pretty much has rebranded Olympus uh, EVF. Yeah, yeah. And made it, like, two times more expensive. Yeah. You just get the Olympus yeah. version, no logo, right. and it's, like, 200 bucks, you know? Oh, yeah, Leica yeah. with the Lumix stuff, it's kind of like how uh, Volkswagen bought out Lamborghini. Yeah. And so like even the new Audis, they essentially look like baby Lambos. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, essentially at this point just shooting with the Lumix and trust the old really Rico Gero 3. One on Rico, I think. Cool. Yeah. Oh wait, oh wait, so I'm still I'm still recording. Okay. Alright, so talk talk more about the so it was actually interesting because initially you're doing the toss up between the M two forty and the, the ME. And the ME is technically quote quote more outdated, right. but it has, it has like the CCD sensor right. versus the CMOS. So what are, what are your first impressions thus far? And you could just, just be just just be brutally honest. Yeah, thus far, I will say that um, this is probably the worst camera I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> low light, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In low light, I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, the first camera I've ever ever had was a Sony A three thousand. Yeah, yeah. That thing uh, was even better than this. Yeah. But yeah. I will say that when it comes to um, good lighting and um, fast action stuff, mm -hmm. you know, this is the best camera I've ever owned. Why, why uh, is that? Better than the Fuji Expert 2. Just because um, the results are much better. I think mm -hmm. the Fuji colors are really good, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they're also um, a bit punched up. Mm -hmm. um, and Leica's color, I guess like palette, is yeah, like yeah. more honest, you know? Mm. What do you um, mean more honest? It's like a little bit more bland, yeah. but it matches the surrounding world. Cause oh. like the Fuji colors look nice, but they're not, from my experience, they're not like as representative as uh, what I saw in real yeah, life. Yeah. You know, like they're a bit, they're a bit punched up, punched mm. up. And this one, um, sometimes it comes off a little bland, but I think that actually adds to the photo. You know, mm. and like um, the colors come out more realistic and, and stuff like that. Wait, so show me the top, of the camera in the back and stuff. Top. So top here. So how do they how do they market this camera? Well, what do you mean? So. Oh, so like once again, like what what interests you about this camera? Oh, oh, oh. At first you're like, oh, oh sorry, should I get sorry. the M two forty, and blah blah. Because uh, M two forty, um, gotta say, it's still tempting me, but it's like a bit overkill. It's like the only Leica M with a uh, video and all that stuff. Yeah, I actually read personally don't of, like it. You personally don't like I don't it, right? Like it, no. I've read a bunch of reviews saying that um, it's like I've never used like one tenth of the features it has. And yeah. Stuff like that. Um, this one's simple. There's nothing I, to I mess with. I think the back it actually looks more like Bauhaus. Yeah, uh, house design in terms yeah. of the, the buttons and, and I, I, love, I love I love the, the 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 clicky thing here. Right, man, because it actually I'm starting to get like nostalgia because like I think about my first uh, M9. Right, it's still like kind of the same thing. Because yeah, actually like the I think it was like yeah like one of the best. Because actually I I feel like after the M9 like right. when this came out what I think 2012 it came out 2012 2011 yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it was so fucking hype. This but one? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, the M9. M9, yeah. It was such a huge deal, but then once the M240 came out, I was kind of like, meh. Yeah. And then once the M10 came out, I, I still feel kind of meh about it. Yeah. I mean, M10 wasn't that big of an improvement, right? Or maybe yeah, I'm missing really. something, I right? I mean, like, it just kind of looks a bunch more like of hype, the, right? the, yeah. the film. So I'm like, I'm like man, yeah, it's like yeah. not as cool as, as it used to yeah. be anymore or whatever. Oh, you know what's a camera that's really overshadowed, though? What? Uh, the 262. 
Oh, the that's M2, which one is that? 262. It's the M240. It has the same body as this. Yeah. M240 simplified. It has it has the same body as this. Mm -hmm. Um but no live view and no video. Okay, so like stripping away all that stripping BS. Stripping away all that, yeah, all the, all the BS. Because uh. even if I had the M240, I wouldn't use it for video ever in my life anyways. Uh -huh. So uh, M2, M262, and it has like, um, it's, it's much prettier. I, that's all I can say. Yeah, 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 it's much yeah. prettier than the really? M240. It's got a smaller logo. I think the M240's logo. logo is real big, isn't is it? Here? Hmm. Or something about sure. that, if I, if I saw it online. Huh. But it doesn't have the M or anything like that. It's ah. just very clean. Oh, so some people who are watching this video might be curious, like, oh, you know, how did this spoiled rich Asian right, kid right, right. afford a, a like, or first of all, how much did you get for it and stuff like that? And also, like, yeah. how did you afford it? So uh, I got this pre-owned, uh -huh. of course. I cannot afford a, uh, a new Leica at uh -huh. all. Yeah. Not even this one. Yeah. Was new. Um, I worked pretty much all my senior year uh, for this. I saved up because after I got the Fuji, I was pretty much just saving up for whatever was coming next. I have like reserve money yep. for my photo gear because that's all I spend my money on. Nice. Uh -huh. But um, I got it for um, 2,300 euros, mm -hmm. which comes out to about 2,660 US dollars. And Euro's not doing so good, huh? Euro's not <laughs> doing so good. Good, good for right. us Americans though. I know, but it was a good deal. Uh -huh. um, basically what happened was uh, I waited a week before I went to the store just mm -hmm. for like, cause we had other stuff to do. Yeah. Um, and then the day I got there, they were like, Oh yeah, the camera that, uh, you were waiting for was actually reserved by someone else. Oh. So I was like looking at it through the glass, like Man. shit, that's not mine. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then someone comes around and says, um, Oh, we just got in the mail another mm. one from Germany. Mm. And this one actually has the box and all the accessories oh, cool. yeah, and everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was just like a hundred euros more. Sweet. And so I was like, well, I'll reserve that one. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and then I, I, I got this one. Dude, that's And it looks new. I think it hasn't disappointed me. Well, the, yeah. the nice thing too, yeah, especially with, yeah. The, um, with this, uh, this lens, it's so nice and flat. Like, right? flat. Right. It's nice and thin. It's actually, yeah, it's like that's what I'm saying. Like it makes nice. the camera look pretty, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, uh, so Dylan, so you know, one thing I'm gonna help you is build up your own website and blog, thanks, blah blah. Thanks, thanks, so thanks. So what are your, what are your, that. what are your, so 19. What are your life goals with photography or street photography, huh. website, entrepreneurship, blah 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 blah. Well, I can be cliche and say I want to be like you. Oh but, yeah, right, right, right. Not but, be better than me. <laughs> right, but, um, I don't know. I think. Like, I don't want to ever, like, give up on photography. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to see where, like, you know, ID goes and whatever. But mm. I want to be successful in photography right? more mm. than ID, I think. Like, mm. um, I would like to, um, I really like foreign affairs. So I would like to be, like, a foreign journalist of some oh, sort. Oh, let's see. That would be, huh. like, perfect job for me, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, I mean, and then res with respect to, like, YouTube and my blog, yeah. I want to just have like a nice fan base, you know, mm, nice. just like watches my content. Yeah. I'm not going to like make crazy videos or anything like that, mm. but I just want solid content. Yeah. Well, I would actually say like <laughs> just off the top of my head, if I were in your shoes, I'd probably actually stick with ID instead of photography. Yeah. Because I feel like <laughs> at least with ID, you'll learn like more practical things, like how to use like AutoCAD and yeah. stuff like that. And I, I feel like the, the projects you'll work on would be more interesting. And yeah. then who knows, maybe you could actually end up, you know, starting your own Leica or designing right. your own cameras and stuff yeah. like that. that I think that that's way true. cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like, I mean like, you know, for me, right. I like, I consider myself successful in photography. Yeah. I've never taken, like I didn't go to school for photography right, right. and I actually feel that, um, by not having that focus in photography was actually good for me because I was able to stay away from the, right. the dogma. Cause I'm sure you, you know, at RISD, right. Like you do photography and you know, it's like, you had to do those typical like boring medium format yeah, photos medium. of everyone exactly, looking exactly. everyone looking so blase exactly, like exactly. you know you know that aesthetic i'm talking about it's like you I know, know you know i know i know, I know. or it's like we you gonna shoot an eight by ten camera right, 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 and stuff right, like right. that they set it up in like a room full of people looking sad yeah no, I yeah know exactly yeah what you mean. i don't, I don't exactly. like that um yeah but i think it'll be super duper dope you know you cross planning with industrial design and just kind of oh, find something new, you know there, there has to be something yeah yeah or you know i could do both at the same time mm. it's not so yeah. so uh, uh after this video where can people find you well currently i have uh, dylanfanphoto.com mm -hmm. but um i'll try to i'm starting my i guess my own youtube channel in a sense and Sick. and uh have my blog mm -hmm. um not sure i think i'll just transfer the name dylan fan photo to mm -hmm. that blog so i think you can just find it there sounds yeah. good man thanks All so right, much yeah, yeah yeah make it happen